Dojan! What's up, people's face here and elsewhere? This is Undefeatable Twilight. Yes, it's very late again. Yes, I'm at a terrible angle. Why is this not working? But I'm doing it. It's a chapter of the book, like I always do. I may have to turn the light on, actually. I could not see this book. I thought the torch from my phone would be enough, but I guess not, so one second. I'll turn this off for now because I won't need it in a bit. And, ah, there we go. Okay, chapter 31. In a deep well of darkness, a crippled robot sat. It had been silent in its metallic darkness for some time. It was cold and damp, but being a robot it was supposed not to be able to notice these things. With an enormous effort of will, however, it did manage to notice them. Its brain had been harnessed to the central intelligence core of the cricket war computer. It wasn't enjoying the experience, and neither was the central intelligence core of the cricket war computer. The cricket robots who had salvaged this pathetic metal creature from the swamps of Squanchella Seta had done so because they, re they had recognised almost immediately its gigantic intelligence and the use which this could be to them. They hadn't reckoned with the attendant personality disorders, which the coldness, the darkness, the dampness, the crampness and the loneliness were doing nothing to decrease. It was not happy with its task. Apart from anything else, the mere coordination of an entire planet's military strategy was taking up only a tiny part of its formidable mind, and the rest of it had become extremely bored. Having solved all the major mathematical, physical, chemical, biological, sociological, philosophical, etymological, meteorological and psychological problems of the universe except his own three times over, he was severely stuck for something to do, and had taken up composing short dol dol dolorous ditties of no tone or indeed tune. The latest one was a lullaby. Now the world has gone to bed, Marvin droned. Darkness won't engulf my head. I can see by infrared. How I hate the night. He paused to gather the artistic and emotional strength to tackle the next verse. Now I lay me down to sleep, try to count electric sheep, sweet dream wishes you can keep. How I hate the night. Marvin, hissed a voice. His head snapped up, almost dislodging the intricate network of electrodes which connected him to the central cricket war computer. An inspection hatch had opened and one of a pair of unruly heads was peering through, whilst the other kept on jogging jogging it by continually darting to look this way and that extremely nervously. Oh, it's you, muttered the robot. I might have known. Hey, kid, said Zaphod in astonishment. Is that you singing just then? I am, Marvin acknowledged bitterly, in particularly scintillating form at the moment. Zaphod po poked his head in through the hatchway and looked around. Are you alone? he said. Yes, said Marvin. Wearily I sit here, pain and misery my only companions. And vast intelligence, of course and infinite sorrow. And, yeah, said Zaphod. Hey, what's your connection with all this? This, said Marvin, indicating with his less damaged arm all the electrodes which connected him with the cricket computer. Then, said Zaphod awkwardly, I, I guess you must have saved my life. Twice. Three times, said Marvin. Zaphod's head snapped round, his other one was looking hawkishly in entirely the wrong direction, just in time to see the lethal killer robot directly behind him seize up and start to smoke. It staggered backwards and slumped against a wall. It slid down it. It slipped sideways, threw its head back and started to sob inconsolably. Zaphod looked back at Marvin. You must have a terrific outlook on life, he said. Just don't even ask, said Marvin. I won't, said Zaphod, and didn't. Hey look, he added, you're doing a terrific job. Which means, I suppose, said Marvin, requiring only one ten thousand million billion trillion grillionth part of his mental powers to make this particular logical leap that you're not going to release me or anything like that. Kid, you know I'd love to, but you're not going to. No, I see. You're working well? Yes, said Marvin. Why stop now, just when I'm hating it? I gotta f go find Trillian and the guys. Hey, you any idea where they are? I mean, I just got a planet to choose from. Could take a while. They are very close, said Marvin dolefully. You can monitor them from here if you like. I better go get them, asserted Zaphod. Uh, maybe they need some help, right? Maybe, said Marvin, with unexpected authority in his lugubrious voice, it would be better if you monitored them from here. That young girl, he added unexpectedly, is one of the least benightedly unintelligent organic life forms it has been my profound lack of pleasure not to be able to avoid meeting. 
Zaphod took a moment or two to find his way through this labyrinthine string of negatives, and emerged at the other end with surprise. Trillian? he said. She's just a kid. Cute, yeah, but temperamental. You know how it is with women. Or oh, perhaps you don't. I assume you don't. If you do, I don't want to hear about it. Plug us in. Totally manipulated. What? said Zaphod. It was Trillian speaking. He turned round. The wall against which the cricket robot was sobbing had lit up to reveal a scene taking place in some other unknown part of the cricket robot war zones. It seemed to be a council chamber of some kind. Zaphod couldn't make it out too clearly because of the robot slumped against the screen. He tried to move the robot, but it was heavy with its grief and tried to bite him, so he just looked around it as best he could. Just think about it, said Trillian's voice. Your history is just a series of freakishly improbable events, and I know an improbable event when I see one. Your complete isolation from the galaxy was freakish for a start, right out on the very edge with a dust cloud around you. It's a setup, obviously. Zaphod was mad with frustration that he couldn't see the screen. The robot's head was obscuring his view of the people Trillium was talking to, its multifunctional battle club was obscuring the background, and the elbow of it, the arm it had pressed tragically against its brow was obscuring Trillian herself. Then, said Trillian, this spaceship that crash-landed on your planet. That's really likely, isn't it? Have you any idea what the, of what the odds are against a drifting spaceship accidentally intersecting with the orbit of a planet? Hey, said Zaphod. She doesn't know what the Zark she's talking about. I've seen that spaceship. It's a fake. No deal. I thought it might be, said Marvin from his prison behind Zaphod. Oh yeah, said Zaphod. It's easy for you to say that. I just told you. Anyway, I don't see what it's got to do, any got to do with anything. And especially, continued Trillian, the odds against it intersecting with the orbit of the one planet in the galaxy, or the whole of the universe as far as I know, that would be totally traumatised to see it. You don't know what the odds are? Nor do I. They're that big. Again, it's a setup. I wouldn't be surprised if that spaceship was just a fake. Zaphod managed to move the robot's battle club. Behind it on the screen were the figures of Ford, Arthur and Slarty Bartfast, who appeared astonished and bewildered by the whole thing. Hey, look, said Zaphod excitedly. The guys are doing great. Ra, 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 go get them, guys. And what about, said Trillian, all this technology you suddenly managed to build for yourselves almost overnight? Most people would take thousands of years to do all that. Someone was feeding you what you needed to know. Someone was keeping you at it. I, I know, I know, she added in response to some unseen interruption. I know you didn't realise it was going on. That is exactly my point. You never realise anything at all. Like this supernova bomb. How do you know about that? said an unseen voice. I just know, said Trillian. You expect me to believe that you are bright enough to invent something that brilliant and be too dumb to realise it would take you with it as well. That's not just stupid, that is spectacularly obtuse. Hey, what's this bomb thing? said Zaphod in alarm to Marvin. The supernova bomb, said, said Marvin. It's a very, very small bomb. Yeah, that would destroy the universe in toto, added Marvin. Good idea, if you ask me. They won't get it to work, though. Why not, if it's so brilliant? It's brilliant, said Marvin. They're not. They got as far as designing it before they were locked in the envelope. They spent the last five years building it. They think they've got it right, but they haven't. They're as stupid as any other organic life form. I hate them. Trillian was continuing. Zaphod tried to pull the cricket robot away by its leg, but it kicked and growled at him, and then quaked with a fresh outburst of sobbing. Then suddenly it slumped over and continued to express its feelings out of every everybody's way on the floor. Trillian was standing alone in the middle of the chamber, tired out but with fiercely burning eyes. Ranged in front of her were the pale-faced and wrinkled elder masters of cricket, motionless behind their whitely curved control desk, staring at her with helpless fear and hatred. In front of them, equidistant between their control desk and the middle of the chamber, where Trillian stood as if on trial, was a slim white pillar about four feet tall. On top of it stood a small white globe, about three, maybe four inches in diameter. Beside it stood a cricket robot with its multifunctional battle club. In fact, explained Trillian, you are so dumb stupid, she was sweating, Zaphod felt that this was an unattractive thing for her to be doing at this point, you are all so dumb stupid that I doubt, I very much doubt, if you've been able to build the bomb properly without any help from Haktar for the last five years. Who's this guy Haktar? said Zaphod, squaring his shoulders. If Marvin replied, Zaphod didn't hear him, all his attention was concentrated on the screen. One of the elders of Cricket made a small motion with his hand towards the Cricket robot. The robot raised its club. There's nothing I can do, said Marvin. It's on an independent circuit from the others. Wait, said Trillian. The, the elder made a small motion. The robot halted. Trillian suddenly seemed very doubtful of her own judgment. 
How do you know all this? said Zaphod to Marvin at this point. Computer records, said Marvin. I have access. You're very different, aren't you, said Trillian to the Elder Masters, from your fellow worldlings down on the ground. You spent all your lives up here, unprotected by the atmosphere. You've been very vulnerable. The rest of your race is very frightened, you know. They don't want you to do this. You're out of touch. Why don't you check up? The, uh, the cricket elder grew impatient. He made a gesture to the robot, which was precisely the opposite of the gesture he had last made to it. The robot swung its battle club. It hit the small white globe. The small white globe was the supernova bomb. It was a very, very small bomb, which was designed to bring the entire universe to an end. The supernova bomb th flew through the air. It hit the back wall of the council chamber and dented it very badly. So how does she know all this, said Zaphod. Marvin kept a sullen silence. Probably just bluffing, said Zaphod. Poor kid. I should never have left her alone. Okay, got to give my fem feminine voice a bit of a workout. Still haven't had voice coaching, but hopefully soon. But anyways, thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you are subscribed, be sure to ding that notification bell so you know when I make a new video, because I can do it whenever I feel like it. Thank you to my patron, Angel. If you want to support me on Patreon, the link's in the description. Uh, I read, I may read one of your stories, so, you know, send me, send me some money. It will help me a lot. And if you like books, you should check out Angel's page, because he writes a lot of books and sells them. And you should totally buy some. So that's it. See you all again next time. Take care of yourselves and each other. Love and peace.